Today we want to be every single Pokemon champion and there is a lot of them. It's the Team Aqua leader Archie. Archie wants to see the world flooded and has a Kyogre to help him do that. But he's turning over a new leaf and focusing on becoming the Pokemon champion. If he does manage to beat them all with three powerful trainers he must face to claim victory. If a Pokemon faints it's gone from the whole run and a few more rules added on for more difficulty too. Can Archie beat every Pokemon champion? First up is Pokemon Fire Red and we have the champion for this game Blue. This is our team consisting of a Kyogre and a Sharpedo which we can Mega Evolve later on. His moveset on his Pokemon are really good too and I'll try to keep it as accurate as possible when possible. He only has 5 Pokemon so we're going to be taking on some of his Manga Pokemon too like Walrein and Tentacruel. Let's take on the first champion. Blue's lead is his Pidgeot and we lead off with our Sharpedo who's going to be our lead for this run. And well it's a pretty bad start for us as the Waterfall is not doing too much damage and Aerial Ace is hurting us. However we have Rough Skin so Pidgeot is taking chip damage too. Another waterfall and an aerial ace brings us both low and puts Pidgeot in full restore range. We hit one more waterfall after Blue heals his bird and now we've got to switch. I go into Crobat but he gets critical hit from an aerial ace putting him at around half. But Crobat is a fast Pokemon and we sludge bomb. Still not taking it out as an aerial ace weakens us once more. A final sludge bomb and we take down his first Pokemon but not very well. Out comes Alakazam next and it's a free switch into Mychiena on the psychic. We then hit a powerful crunch as Alakazam sets up a reflect. Another crunch and down goes Alakazam. This brings out Rhydon. We dig underground dodging scary face but our dig does practically nothing to him. Then we get this our speed lowered. We crunch Rhydon again for more damage as he just spams scary face. Reflect wears off and an earthquake does big damage to us as our crunch brings him to a sliver. Blue now burns a full restore and I crunch once more lowering his special defense too. I've now got to swap so I go into wall rain on the earthquake that still does nearly half to us. But a surf is more than enough to take down the ground type. This brings brings out Executor and we just swap straight into Muk and we get put to sleep with Sleep Powder. We then get eggs thrown at us for good damage but the next turn we wake up and hit a Fire Punch for massive damage before taking more eggs out. With a critical hit, Burning Fist, Muk then takes down Executor bringing out Arcanine next. Our switches are pretty ruined now but we do have a Kyogre in the back. We swap into the Legendary and set up the Rain and a Flamethrower does practically nothing to us. And Extreme Speed does a bit more to us as we miss a Hydro Pump. We get Extreme Speed in again putting us at half before a rain boosted hydro pump from our legendary takes him down leaving his final pokemon blastoise with rain thunder is 100% accurate and we are just way too powerful and we take him down in one attack beating blue and archie conquers kanto honestly our team seemed very frail kyogre's raw power is definitely going to help us but this could be a rough run on to johto lance is a champion of johto in the next we face he's a flying type i mean a dragon type champion with our move coverage and a lot of ice type attacks I'm expecting an easier time here, but we don't have any switchings to Outrage. Let's beat Lance. Lance's lead is Gyarados, and Sharpedo turn 1 hits a Night Slash for pretty weak damage as Gyarados goes for a Waterfall, and he takes Rough Skin damage too. We Night Slash once more, and we take another attack, once again putting him in full Restore range. So Lance heals, and we get off another attack. I now swap into Muk, who tanks a waterfall decently, and we can outspeed and take down Gyarados with a Thunder Punch. This brings out his ace to level 50 Dragonite. I know Muk's got some speed invested and is still quite healthy, so I risk it and stay in an Ice Punch. We outspeed and a single Ice Punch takes him down, showing Muk's strength. Third is level 49 Dragonite. Thinking we outspeed again, I stay in, but we don't, and we get Thunder Waved as we get Parahax too. I now swap into Walrein, who dodges a Dragon Rush, and we outspeed and take down Dragonite with an Ice Beam. Then is Aerodactyl, who hits an extremely hard Rock Slide as a single Surf takes him down. This brings out his last Dragonite, and I'm not risking anything, so I swap into Mighty Enna as we take a Dragon Rush to above half. We then outspeed an Ice Fang, putting him on a sliver of HP, and we get the Freeze. But he falls out instantly, and then misses a blizzard. On the full restore we ice fang but we miss so we've got to swap now. I go into our Kyogre as we dodge another blizzard. I then miss click thunder and we get paralyzed. Then Dragonite starts dragon rushing para flinching us. We take another dragon rush but we break through an ice beam to take him down. His last Pokemon is Charizard who hits an air slash that we tank and we get paralyzed again. I now go into Crobat who takes the air slash too. We sludge bomb and we snag the poison as an air slash puts us low. I go into my T and we take an air slash hoping i'm faster we thunder fang and we are and a critical hit make sure he stays put down beating lance but not as convincing again as i thought it'd be this is pretty rough i really can't afford to lose
use a Pokemon this early on, it's time to head to Hoenn where Mega Evolution awaits. In Pokemon Omega Ruby, Steven is a champion. He has mainly rock and steel types. We match up really nicely versus him and we have a Mega Sharpedo, but he also does have a Mega Metagross. Let's see what damage we can do. Steven's lead is Skarmory and we lead off with Sharpedo and we immediately activate our trump card by Mega Evolving into the monster. And what a start as we critical hit Skarmory with a waterfall and we snag a flinch, a perfect turn. The next turn, we take down the Steel Bird with a final waterfall. Steven sends out our Moldo next, but it's no match for our Mega Evolved Pokemon and falls to a super effective waterfall. Third is Cradilia Grass type. We Ice Fang for super effective damage and with our Jaws, he just falls too. Fourth is Agron. It has Sturdy, but it still tanks a waterfall and hits us hard back with a Stone Edge. Steven Full restores up Agron as our waterfall brings him back down. Then Steven Full restores yet again, so we once again bring him back down. Steven finally accepts his fate and lets Agron fall to a waterfall attack from Sharpedo. Fifth is Claydol, another ground type showing Sharpedo's true strength, he falls to a waterfall attack, leaving just one Pokemon standing in our way of victory, and that's his ace Metagross. However, it's going to Mega Evolve and it knows Giga Impact. I really don't want to risk Sharpedo so early into the games, so we've got to switch to play it safe. I go into Wall Rain as he does in fact go for a Giga Impact, but we survive it on 77 HP. I then go for a Surf to get off some much needed damage on this monster. We've now got to swap again though as he's definitely faster so I go into Kyogre knowing we have high HP and the speed but we dodge a Giga Impact giving us the opportunity to hit a rain boosted water attack to take down Mega Metagross and Archie finally defeats Steven but it's still one more champion in Hoenn left to face. Our second champion for generation 3 is Wallace. He's a water type specialist with some powerful Pokemon. I'm gonna be honest we are so abusing permanent rain and thunder spam with Kyogre here but can we take down all of his Pokemon? Let's find out. Wallace leads with a massive Waylord and turn one, I'm not even going to attack with Sharpedo. I swap straight into Kyogre as we take a double edge for a bit of damage. We also set up the rain thanks to Drizzle and in this gen it's permanent. Now we can start the carnage with a super effective thunder attack from our legendary the massive whale falls. Second is Ludicolo who starts setting up an evasion with a double team but we hit our thunder for massive damage and we paralyze him lowering his speed. The next turn we connect another thunder and take down the grass and water type. Third is Tentacruel but it can't stand to the might of Archie and his Kyogre and falls too. Fourth is a bulky Milotic. This actually does survive a thunder attack thanks to its fantastic bulk, but we paralyze him as he hits a weak surf. His citrus berry takes him out of full restore range, so a final thunder from Kyogre and he falls. Fifth is Whiskash. In hindsight, I should have hydro pumped, but an ice beam does over half and we get the freeze, but he falls out and amnesia is raising his special defense. We hit him again with an ice beam missing out on the KO as he earthquakes to bring us low. Wallace now full restores him, healing the catfish but I now decide to start hydro pumping and the damage is massive. A final hydro pump and down with cash goals leaving one Pokemon left and that's Gyarados. But it's four times weak to electric and we have a 100% accuracy thunder. And with that Gyarados goes down and Kyogre sweeps through Hoenn. And it's sort of fitting as we wanted to drown the world but we became conqueror of Hoenn instead. It's time to set our eyes on Sinnoh next. Symphri is a champion of the Sinnoh region. Her team is a powerful one. We have ways to deal with Garchomp but she does have some hard hitters. We've got a play our swaps here right I think. Cynthia's lead is Spirit Tomb and where we lead with Sharpedo as always. A waterfall does great damage but Spirit Tomb knows Silver Wind, a bug move that does massive damage back to us. We can take it out of a waterfall though the next turn but out comes Roserade. We swap to Crobat on the Sludge Bomb, we then hit an Air Cutter for great damage before taking a massive extra sensory in return. A final Air Cutter and down Roserade goals. Third is Togekiss and I swap to Muck as he goes for a sidekick that really hurts us. We outspeed the next turn and Thunder Punch for big damage before a sidekick brings us to 23 HP. A final Thunder Punch and down Togekiss goes too. This brings out her ace Garchomp. We're going toe to toe with Cynthia at the moment. We swap into Wall Rain as he luckily misses a Dragon Rush. Then Garchomp brick breaks us hurting our Walrus but a 4 times super effective Stab Ice Beam deals with her biggest threat. This brings out Lucario next and our team is weakened. I go into Kyogre now on the Aura Sphere. With the Rain boosting Hydro Pump, Lucario stands no chance and he goes down. This brings out my Lotic. It knows a miracle and I'm not risking losing a Kyogre. So I swap into my Tiena as he sets up an Aqua Ring. We then Thunder Fang for over half and we flinch her as she heals with Aqua Ring. Our next Thunder Fang puts my Lotic on 1 HP as we get hit from a rain boosted surf and massive damage. Cynthia full restores and our next Thunder Fang does half again but thanks to Aqua Ring it can survive another attack. So I now swap back into Kyogre who eats up the surf and with the extra chip damage can guarantee to take 
take it out of the thunder, beating Cynthia in a close battle again. Honestly, we are one wrong move away from losing a Pokemon, but so far so good. Let's move on to Unova. First up in Gen 5 is Alder, and he's got some solid Pokemon with a big weakness to fire and a few bugs on his team. Let's start the first champion of Unova. Alder's lead of a Selgor isn't the best for our water lead at all, so I immediately swap into Monk as he tanks a Focus Blast that would have decimated Sharpedo. We then tank a Bug Buzz that critical hits and deliver a fiery fire punch to take his first Pokemon down. Second is Bufalon, a big threat. I swap into Crowbar expecting a ground move, but we get head charged, so that's a misplay. I then swap to Mightyena for the Intimidate as a Stone Edge thankfully misses. We crunch for good damage, about half as a Mega Horn then brings us very low. Not risking a damage roll now, I swap into Walrein, who also gets smashed with a head charge. We then outspeed the Buffalo and take it down with a Surf. Out next is Drudagon. It's a very easy knockout for our Ice type with a Stab Ice Beam. Then out comes a Scavalier. It could hurt us with an Iron Head, but I decide to stay in the attack anyways. We do just enough to bring him to half with a Surf as he goes for an X Scissor instead. We tank it decently, so the next turn we take him down too. This brings out Volcarona. I'm taking no chances, so I swap into Kyogre and set up the Rain as he goes for an Overheat that does nothing and reduces his special attack. A Rain Boosted Hydro Pump then deals with a Fire Bug, leaving just an Ice Cream Cone left. We go for another Hydro Pump in the Rain to melt the Ice Cream and defeat Alder, but it's still one more champion in Unova left to face. Iris is the second champion and the majority of her Pokemon are Dragons. Anything with Dragons, Archie matches up super well first and we're now at the halfway point, but we can't afford to make any mistakes, so let's continue. Iris's lead is Hydreigon and Sharpedo outspeeds a Darkened Dragon type, bites on it with an Ice Fang and freezes him. That's again a perfect first turn. Taking advantage of our fortune, I swap into Walrein to try and put as much damage into her team as I possibly can. With an Ice Beam, we take down Hydreigon. Then it's Drudagon, who meets the same fate as his teammate and falls to a single Ice Beam too. This brings out Lapras. I try and shear cold, but we miss and get put to sleep with Sing. We stay asleep and take a Thunderbolt. We then stay asleep once more, and we take a Thunderbolt to put us really low. We've got to swap, so I go into Muck on the Thunderbolt, and we take it very nicely. Muck goes for a Thunder Punch for big damage, and we take a Surf to nearly half. A final electrifying punch and Blapris falls. This brings out Agron next. I don't want to risk Muck, so I swap into Sharpedo as he automizes. We are still faster and a waterfall does really good damage as he automizes once more. Agron now outspeeds us and double edges for high damage as our next waterfall just takes him out. This brings out Erase Haxorus. We cannot afford it to set up, so I swap into Mighty Enna to get off the Intimidate Lore in his attack as Haxorus goes for an X Scissor doing over half. Now we double into Kyogre, setting up the rain as we tank an X Scissor, and Kyogre's here to clean up. We Ice Beam to bring him down to his Focus Sash as he goes for a Dragon Dance. Iris will full restore, but he's burned his Focus Sash, so our next Ice Beam takes down a race, leaving only one Pokemon left, a Archeops. But it's no match for our legendary water type, and it falls to a single Ice Beam too, letting Archie conquer Univer and become champion. It's time for the 3DS games and Kalos next. Diantha is the champion of Kalos and who we take on next. Her team's pretty strong, and she's got a Mega Gardevoir. Kyogre wants once again will be needed here I fear, although the rest of our team can put in some solid work too. Diantha's lead is a flying and fighting type Horlucha and Sharpedo can hit a super effective Ice Fang turn 1 and our jaws are just way too powerful and he falls. Second Diantha sends out Gudra, it knows Focus Blast and I'd rather be safe than sorry so I swap into Muck as she does in fact miss. The next turn we hit an Ice Punch for massive damage as we tank a Dragon Pulse decently. Diantha now full restores Gudra but Muck's had enough, freezes his fist and hits a critical hit on the bulky Dragon to take it down. This brings out the T-Rex Tyrantrum. We stay in an Ice Punch as we snag a flinch. I forgot this move can even flinch. We Ice Punch again, barely missing out on the KO, and a Head Smash puts us on only 12 HP. That was close. But thankfully, he dies to his own recoil. Next out is Aurorus, the Ice Dinosaur, and we've got to swap. We go into Wall Rain as he goes for a Blizzard, and it does 10 damage exactly. How pathetic. So we reply with a Surf and show Aurorus true damage with yet another critical hit. I'm not sorry. This brings out Galgai. I stay in an Ice Beam, and this is looking fantastic as Galgeist just dies too. This brings out our last Pokemon, Gardevoir, who then gets our ability Thick Fat. She Mega Evolves into Mega Gardevoir as we hit a Surf not even doing half as a Thunderbolt brings us close to the end. We have to swap, and the only Pokemon we can safely swap into is Kyogre. I know it's bulky and fast as a Thunderbolt brings us very, very close to half. We miss a Hydro Pump, and Diantha hits a Thunderbolt to bring us to 11 HP. That was so close. But I can't switch. I just don't 
have anything that can deal with Gardevoir. I stay in in Hydro Pump and luckily we connect it in the rain to take the Mega down and win the fight. But once again, this is getting so close to losing a Pokemon, which I fear the next champion will do. How is the person we fight to become champion here when he's always one of the most trickiest? His team really does pack a punch. His lead is a massive problem. Like it's got coverage for my poison types, my water types, and I'm really not sure on what to do. I think we're going to lose a Pokemon. How's lead is an Alolan Raichu and I'm really thinking on how to approach this. Any swap will take a big Thunderbolt and it'll just outspeed and Psychic. So I make the immediate decision to sacrifice a Pokemon and unfortunately it's Walrein. We just don't have any choices. One Thunderbolt brings us low and paralyzes our Walrus as the second devastating Thunderbolt kills him, picking up the first death of the run. Use a valuable Pokemon Walrein RIP. Now we can send out Mutt. We take a Psychic, barely hanging on with 55 HP and deliver a poison attack to one hit knock out this big threat. By the cost of a crippled Muck and a knocked out Pokemon. This brings out another huge threat, Tauros, who lowers our attack with Intimidate. We swap to Crobat on the incoming Earthquake to neutralize it. We then Sludge Bomb for great damage on the bull and we snag a Poison as he hits a double edge for big damage and he takes huge recoil putting him on a sliver after Poison. How uses a full restore removing the Poison but Crobat replies with a critical hit to his heal. A final Sludge Bomb and Tauros goes down. This brings out Crabominable the Ice Crab. We've got to swap and yet again no switches that can deal with it except Kyogre so we go into him but even then a resisted Ice Hammer puts a massive dent in us nearly half thanks to its great attack stat. However we can reply with a rain boosted Hydro Pump to nuke the crab in one move. How's reply to our Kyogre is Leafeon and I don't want to play around with this. I swap into my Tiena to intimidate it as we take a Leaf Blade to the face. Leafeon then charms us reducing our attack stat harshly and I should have probably Ice Fanged but I crunch turn one and it does nothing anyway. He then Leaf Blades us putting us very low as our Ice Fang does nothing too. We got to swap and you guessed it no switchings i go into crowbar as we get hit by a quick attack and we take it we then take another quick attack barely hanging on and we hit an air cutter to take it down this brings out his ace incineroar and a z move is coming our best bet is straight into kyogre to get the rain going and reduce the damage we're about to take as much as possible incineroar goes for inferno overdrive and by dropping a nuke on kyogre's head that also critical hits we absorb it but we are weakened now we can go for a rain boosted hydro pump to take it down in one attack, leaving his last Pokemon Noivern. It's definitely faster and I'm going to risk Kyogre here. I don't have many choices. We stay in as he Dragon Pulses. It puts us on only 5 HP, but this means a super effective Ice Beam takes him out and we barely make it past How. That was an incredibly tough battle and we lost one Pokemon, but it's time to move on to the Switch games. So for Trace, we once again don't have a full team of Pokemon. We have a Tentacruel and a Mutt. So for now, we're going to make them gods again and we'll sweep him. For anyone that doesn't know, you can get 200 AP EVs in the game, which gives you an insane stat total. Muck one-shots Trace first Pokemon Mega Pidgeot with a Thunder Punch, and Slowbro actually tanks a hit from our literal gods and sets up a light screen, but he just flops the next turn. Rapidash falls to a single poison jab, and that's a fire horse down. Jolteon suffers the same fate his ace, and he dies to a poison jab too. Vileplume just gets obliterated by a fire punch, and Marowak, well, he's kind of bulky, so he does survive an ice punch, but it's in vain because he'll eventually fall after Trace uses 5,000 and full restores. For the next run, we're probably going to upgrade and face Trace's upgraded team. It means his Pokemon have a better moveset and they're a bit stronger. But for the time being, let's move on to the Switch game, Sword and Shield. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is really strong with a Gigantamax Charizard. We can't use Mighty Enna here or Crobat, which sucks, but Dexit did happen. So we substitute in a Quillfish and Whalemur that, according to Bulbapedia, is resting at Team Aqua's headquarters. Let's do this. Leon's lead is his Aegis slash and I lead with Sharpedo. I actually decide to Dynamax turn 1 to inflict maximum damage by going for a max darkness on Aegislash. Turn 1, we just instantly take it out. We don't have to deal with King Shield Malarkey. Second out is Dragapult and it's actually faster than us. It hits a very, very hard Thunderbolt but a max Hailstorm makes sure it can't hurt us anymore and we take it down. Third is Mr. Rhyme, the dancing Mr. Mime. Our final turn of Dynamax means we can get off another max darkness and that seals his fate by taking him out and Sharpedo has done his job fantastically. Out next is Haxorus as our Dynamax ends. I don't want to lose Sharpedo, so I swap into Whalemur, our highest HP Pokemon. But Haxorus goes for an Outrage and we don't take it well at all. In fact, we do survive, but only on 8 HP. And thanks to Max Hailstorm's secondary effect, we instantly die to Hail. RIP Blue Ball, I failed you. Now I go into Kyogre to exact revenge for his fallen sea companion. We get rid of the Hail with Drizzle and we Ice Beam Haxorus to instantly take it out of a critical hit. Kyogre was just furious with Whalemur's death. 
Out next is this water starter in Teleon. But it's raining and we have thunder, so that means calling down the electricity from the sky, we can fry him, and this just leaves him with a Charizard left. Leon Gigantamexes him, but Kyogre is still faster, and a rain boosted hydro pump takes him down, cleaning up Leon really nicely, but with the death of a new Pokemon. With only one more mainline game to go, can we keep pulling through? The last champion is Gita for Generation 9, and she's got some really unique Pokemon too. We lose Sharpedo once more as he's not in these games, and with Whalmer's death, we've added a shelter to the team too. We're struggling to bolster our numbers, but we'll work with what we've got. Her lead is a Sparfair, and I decide to lead with my Tiena, the other Gen 3 Pokemon. It's actually a good matchup for us, but a Sparfair does hit a super hard Dazzling Gleam as we reply with a massive crunch to take down the Psychic Ostrich. Second out is Golgo, and I decide to go into Muk. We just throw a gunk at the Grass Goal, and it can't survive Muk's raw power and falls. Third, Gita sends Avalug out, and I let Tentacruel get some action. We hit a Hydro Pump for half on the Ice Slab as he replies with a massive earthquake to pause instantly in the red. Risking everything, our Hydro Pump once more. Luckily, we land it and have a log falls. Then it's King Gambit. And honestly, Shelder and Quillfish can't really deal with him, so I go back into Muk. We fire punch for good damage, but a Zen Headbutt just destroys us, nearly taking us out. I now decide to utilize Kyogre once more by swapping into him on the Zen Headbutt, which still does good damage to us. A Rain Boosted Hydro Pump is just devastating to all these champions, and Gita is no different as King Gambit. Gambit falls. No reason to switch now as she sends out Veluza, the psychic fish. We stay in and summon four once more and strike it down with a thunder, leaving her last Pokemon and her race Glamora. Gita terrestrializes it into a pure rock type, and honestly, you know what's going to happen. A rain boosted hydro pump from our legendary obliterates her, taking down Glamora, beating Gita, and every single Pokemon champion as Archie. Or have we? Atop of the Snowy Mount Silver is Legendary Trainer Red and a Champion Trainer at that. Thankfully, Sharpedo is faster than Pikachu and takes him out of a single waterfall and that could have been a big trouble. Out second is Venusaur. We hit an Ice Fang and we snag a Freeze. What a start from Sharpedo's return. A final Ice Fang and down goes Venusaur. Third is Blastoise. It has Focus Blast so we swap to Muk and we eat it very nicely. Blastoise then hits a critical hit Blizzard and we reply with a Thunder Punch to bring him low too. But now we got a swap again so I go into Tentacruel who tanks a blizzard easily. Red full restores and we start Giga Draining. We Giga Drain again putting him in the red as he misses a focus blast. So then Tentacruel takes down Blastoise. Fourth is Lapras. We Sludge Bomb for good damage but it's Psychic does a lot more. I figured if we can live Psychics if we keep Giga Draining and healing and we do. So Tentacruel manages to beat a Lapras with a super effective Psychic too. But then it's Snorlax. I swap into my Tiena for the Intimidate as he goes for a crunch. We then crunch ourselves to put Snorlax on half after hail. But a blizzard or also puts us below half too. I swap into Sharpedo on the next Blizzard who tanks it nicely and thanks to all the damage can take him down with a waterfall. This just leaves a Charizard left. A single waterfall takes Charizard down, beating Red as he disappears. Team Plasma N and a champion himself. He's also got a legendary. We need to win to continue. End leads with Reshiram and we lead Sharpedo. Our Night Slash does close to half, but a Fusion Flare, even though it's resisted, hurts us a lot. So I swap into Kyogre to tank it. Then I Hydro Pump to demolish Reshiram. Out comes Kling Clang. We miss a Hydro Pump and he metal sounds us, so we've got to swap. I go into Muk to take the Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, thanks to the rain, Fire Punch is now not going to do much damage as he metal sounds us again and we bring him to half. I swap again now into Tentacruel who takes a Hyper Beam nicely and then we take down Kling Clang with a Surf. Out next is Caracosta. A rain boosted attack brings him to his sturdy as he hits a Stone Edge. M full restores so I just Hydro Pump again. Then we take him down with a Giga Drain. This brings out Archeops. I risk the speed standoff and we do in fact outspeed so another rain boosted Hydro Pump and he falls too. This brings out Zoroark and there is no chance we're faster than this so I go into my Tiena on the Night Slash. Then I double into Muk on the Focus Blast. We then get hit from a Night Slash before taking it down with a Gunk Shot. His last Pokemon is Vanillix. I swap back into Kyogre, our healthiest Pokemon, as he sets up the Hail. But it doesn't matter as Kyogre throws rocks at him, dealing massive damage as we take a Flash Cannon. A final Ancient Power, and we take down the Ice Cream, beating N, and leaving only one champion in our way. Kieran, the most latest champion to be introduced and one of the hardest. This has a focus on double battles. This battle, I've upgraded our movesets to have a better chance as it's a final battle. I also have a strategy 
strategy for Shelder and Quillfish up my sleeve, and you'll see why. Kieran leads Politold and Dragonite with an emphasis on a rain setup. We lead off with Shelder and Quillfish, probably our two weakest Pokemon. Now, there's a reason for this. Shelder has skill link, meaning moves hit five times, and Politold goes for a helping hand on Dragonite, as Quillfish goes for a destiny bond. Shelder outspeeds Dragonite, and Icicle Spears breaking his multi skill. So, after five turns exactly, Shelder destroys the dragon. You go, little dude. This brings out Porygon Z, who immediately plays into my trump card by hyper beaming Quillfish, who the previous turn Destiny bonded. So that means we take Porygon Z down with us. Shelder's then Icicle Spear does absolutely nothing to Politoed as a Weather Ball just destroys Shelder, and now we're at two for two. But they did fantastic. I go into Muck and Mighty Enna as Kieran sends out Grimmsnarl. He goes for a light screen, raising the team's special defense as a play rough does close to half. Then a stab gunk shot from Muck takes down the fairy and dark type, as Politol goes for a weather ball into Mighty Enna to bring it to the red. Out next is Incineroar to lower both my Pokemon's attack stat, which sucks. Mighty Enna play rough Incineroar for not much damage as Muck Thunder punches Politol, getting rid of its Wakanberry. Politol weather balls and takes down Mighty Enna as Incineroar's brick break doesn't do too much to Muck. We're at a free v3 now. I send out Tentacruel and thanks to the rain still being up, Hy Tentacruel's Hydro Pump does fantastic damage into Incineroar who eats his Citrus Berry healing him a little bit. Muck's Thunder Punch brings Politold lower and lower. A Weather Ball from Politold brings Muck low too and the Darkest Laria into Tentacruel does massive damage. Then the rain stops. Tentacruel's next Hydro Pump now misses which sucks as Muck hits a Thunder Punch on Politold and we flinch him perfect but Darkest Laria takes down Tentacruel. We only have a Kyogre left now to set up the rain and we're at five deaths so far. Kyogre's stab hydro pump makes short work of Incineroar and Muck Thunder punches Politold to take it out, leaving us with a two on one. Kieran sends out his ace Hydrapple and terrestrializes it into a pure fighting type. Kyogre hits her hydro pump for massive damage as Muck gets a killing blow with a gunk shot. Defeating Kieran and every single Pokemon champion as Archie. So, five deaths for this run, with Muck and Kyogre being the only ones left to survive. Honestly, if we didn't have a Kyogre Kyogre with his limited Pokemon, I'm not sure we would have even made it past the DS games. Muck was one of my MVPs this run next to Kyogre, who was yours? If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. On Friday, I'll be doing a Misty challenge, so be sure to check that out too. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.